Some of you might remember this tall giraffe in the 100x100 Minecraft world. I touted it as probably the dumbest thing I've ever built. Well, just three days later, I made something more dumb and way more expensive, the glass umbrella. This idea was thrown out by Colin about a month ago after his house burned down. He was worried about lightning striking his house and it being totally destroyed. Now, that was a valid concern. Even though a lightning strike would be rare, we only have about 40 active chunks in the world. If lightning were to strike, it could do a lot of damage. The house, the clouds, and be are all prone to burning down. So the only solution was to block off the entire sky. Frick you, Mother Nature. This is the part of the video where I justify why we needed to, but I got nothing. This is so dumb. The plan was to cover the whole world with glass, because we still wanted to be able to have some sunlight and see the sky. But I realized that would make me go broke, because the only reliable way to get glass is by purchasing it through librarians. The going rate is one emerald for four glass blocks. We need 10,000 blocks, and to buy that requires 2,500 emeralds or roughly 39 stacks. So in hopes that we don't fall into poverty, we're gonna bootleg it. Instead of using full glass blocks, we decide on using glass panes, the much cheaper alternative. And honestly, I think it looks much better. It meshes with the border quite well. But even though it's going to cost less emeralds, we still need a thousand of them or 15 stacks. I could chop trees and sell sticks like I normally do, but I'd rather sell something that I can get automatically like ink sacks. Technically, squids can be farmed with axolotls in the 1.17 update, but this was built in version 1.16. So instead of having axolotls kill the squids like the new farm does, the squids kill themselves. I'm not joking, from day one, the squids in the river just die. You could easily walk across the beach and easily get 20 ink sacks. And who loves ink sacks? Librarians. They'll buy five of them for one emerald. So we did that trade for a bit in the early game. It was pretty nice, we got a few emeralds, but now, now it's insane. Here's a place you might recognize, the fun zone. This is where villagers are taken, killed by zombies, and then cured with a weakness potion and a golden apple. When this happens, they give you much better prices because without me, they'd be a zombie. But without me, they'd still be alive. So we sent five villagers through it, curing them till their prices went from five to one and no regrets. So now when walking along the beach and you find 20 ink sacks, it's practically picking up 20 emeralds. And while I was working on curing these villagers, Tyson started to farm squids and with the insane spawn rate of squids in Fortune 3, we had so many stacks, like it feels wrong to be getting this many emeralds. And we're about to feel way worse because we're not stopping here. The next villager on our list was the cleric who would buy our gold. Now this isn't the trade I got them for. I actually got the cleric so we could buy glowstone for a bigger and maybe even dumber project. But still, these five clerics will trade one gold for one emerald. Our gold farm on the nether roof isn't the most efficient, but it makes good enough gold to make it be worth it. So now with these emeralds, we can start buying glass from librarians. Now it wasn't much of a problem getting enough librarians for us to spend all our emeralds because on top of the five librarians we cured, we also had an entire hallway with villagers that sells us every enchanted book, most of them with glass trades. And then there was just placing all the glass panes, which took a combined six hours to build and, oh she look away, all the times we fell through the umbrella. Now with the clerics and librarians, we were getting a fine amount of emeralds, but we still needed 10,000 glass panes, and the resources we had were running out. Squids were still beaching themselves, but not as fast as we would like, and our gold farm while making a decent profit while AFK just couldn't keep up. And that brings us to our last trade, my favorite trade, all from a farm I've never shown, but has been producing resources right along the gold farm. It's the Hoglin Farm. This farm was built about two days after the gold farm was constructed and is our main source of food, pork chop. I certainly didn't come up with this design, I found it in a Shulker Craft video. I'm not sure if they were the first ones to come up with this design, it can be hard to pinpoint who exactly did because the farm designs change and adapt over time. But basically, hoglins spawn on this platform, they get scared by the warp mushroom and run right into the lava. This produces more than enough pork chop, but also has the byproduct of leather. We didn't do much with it until the leather worker came around, buying six leather for one emerald, but you know me, I sent them to the fun zone and lowered that trade to one leather for one emerald. Now what makes this trade special is one, how easy it is to get leather, but two, you can trade with it 32 times a day instead of the regular 24. When trading with a villager, a good chunk of trades only let you do 12 trades at a time. Then you need to wait for the villager to restock their trades, and after they do, you can trade again, but that's the last time you can for the day. Instead of only being able to do 12 trades at a time for a total of 24, leather workers can do 16 at a time, so a total of 32, meaning in a day, two leather workers can get you a stack of emeralds. Hi, uh, editing Jaring here. So, villagers, I, I kind of misspoke. Villagers 
futures can restock up to two times a day, meaning you can trade a total of three times, but I never really seemed to time it right, so I was still just trading twice a day. After that, it was just a matter of time until we would have enough to finish the big, dumb, stupid umbrella. And like I said, I think the panes look much better as it messaged with the border well. I'm excited to have this as a part of our world. It makes it more charming, per se. I've never seen anyone do this, so I'm glad we're having this as a permanent addition to our world. We removed it a month later because it was preventing wandering traders from spawning. Welp, 